Hi guys, welcome to the welcome to the next video with the VFR. Um, what we're going to do now is um, we are going to carry out a disablement of the pair valve. We are going to remove the inlet snorkel, and we are also going to what's the other thing we're going to do? We're going to do the flapper mod. That's it. We're going to do the flapper mod. Um, all of these are systems that have been introduced by Honda, um, mainly um to uh improve low level uh, to keep the noise levels down um and also to uh control emissions now what the pair stands for is hang on bear with me let me just read the manual pair is the pulse secondary air injection um p-a-i-r not really sure how you get pulse secondary air injection out of that but that's what they've that's what they've defined it as basically the role of that is it's a solenoid controlled reed valve um, and its um, its it, its purpose is to introduce filtered air back into the exhaust system to promote burning of unburnt exhaust gases, um, with a with a with the ultimate aim of improving the burn, reducing hydrocarbons, and saving all the polar bears. Um, what it actually does, in all honesty, is make low down drivability quite poor. Um, there's a huge flat spot on this bike, uh, around about 4,000, 4,500 RPM, give or take. Um, hopefully that will um, remove that uh, and the, the low down drivability will be better. Um, we'll get a bit of a, a better exhaust sound by um, sorting out the flapper. Um, obviously the flapper, I'll, I'll show that in a second, it's in the air box. Um, but all of these, everything that I'm about to do now is totally... Um, can be totally returned to normal without any um without buying any parts there there are nothing there's nothing required on this mod other than a bit of electrical tape and a few tools um so this is where we're going to begin first off take your key and remove the seat put that to one side next thing we're going to do is lift the tank. Um, obviously, ideally, have an empty tank of fuel. Um, this is actually fairly full. Um, hopefully, we'll be, we'll uh, hopefully we'll manage, um, but we'll see how we get on. Um, what you need to lift the tank is an eight mil socket um, and an extension. keeps keeps the tools away from the tank so you don't damage the paintwork. So, eight mil socket extension. Two bolts holding the tank down. Okay, pull them out and the washer that way they don't drop down inside the inside the guts of the bike and you have to fish around with the magnet. Put them to one side so that they don't get lost. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift the tank. So lift the tank like that. Obviously this has got a full tank of fuel so it's fairly heavy. There is a, um, there is a, like a Bowden cable here, um, which, is, which is there basically to stop you stretching any of the pipe work at the back. Um, accidentally um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna get a I'm gonna try and find a piece of wood just to put under here to keep the tank up out of the way what we're looking at down here is this is the vacuum uh, operator for the flapper which is here this is the flapper in here when this vacuum operates it lifts this up and allows extra air into the air box through this channel here this is the normal route for air um, and this is the snorkel this is the th first thing that we're going to remove, okay? Okay, so, bit of wood, as you can see, it's a bit of, uh, it's a bit of workshop wood, hence the reason why it's covered in grease and grime, uh, but it'd be perfectly okay for this job. And there we go, and that will stop the tank falling down. In fact,
Okay, what I've done here is I've removed the Bowden cable and then put the bolt back in so it doesn't get lost. That way I can lift the tank up plenty out of the way and get my bit of wood in there nice. As you can see, it's not gonna fall over. And it's all out of the way. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do, this is all the wiring for the, for me, it grips, which is actually in the way as we speak. But what we're gonna do, simple case to uh, disable the flapper, pop that off, what we'll do, put a bit of tape over there, just to stop any crap getting in. Um, and that is the flapper disabled. This snorkel is a bit of a snug fit, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it out. A bit of force is required for this, but it is rubber and it will come. And there you go, as you can see, the bike is trying to breathe through that. It's like you trying to do a marathon trying to breathe through a straw. So now it's all opened up and uh, you can see it's a nice big opening through into the filter. Um, which I'm also noticing that doesn't look like it's been replaced, even though the place I bought the bike from told me that they'd uh, serviced this bike. So they'll be getting a sternly worded email. With this, just put it to one side, keep it safe, don't throw it away, because that way, if you need to, you can, uh, you, can, you can put it back in and return the bike back to standard. Insulation tape, all we're gonna do is wrap a little bit round the end of this hose, just to keep any weather out of it. keeps all the crap out of the hose and again we're not damaging it in any way then and it can simply be returned to normal and the same for the actual vacuum valve itself simply put a little over the end like that and then a little wrapper tightly wrap some more around. Which is fairly awkward. Let's get it on there as tight as you can. that is the first two bits done okay this is the pair valve um, it's solenoid operated and what it does is it takes the fresh air down this pipe from this side of the air box so it's on the it's on the filtered side of the air box when this is opened it allows that fresh air into the exhaust stream um, obviously one of the problems that it causes and why it, you do get a little bit of bogging down in the low rpms is because obviously this bike has um, O2 sensors. Now introducing fresh air into an exhaust room with O2 sensors is, uh, it's a little bit bonkers to be perfectly honest. I don't really understand why Honda did it, but um, it's going to it's going to cause havoc. Now the, the, o, the O2 sensor is going to think that the um, bike is running lean due to uh, seeing um, unburnt oxygen in the exhaust stream and therefore rich in the mixture. So that's, um, my, well, my belief is that's what causes the uh, the, the low down bogging. Um, disabling the pair valve prevents the air coming from the air box through the valve to the exhaust and therefore stops the low down bogging because the O2 sensors are no longer seeing that air. Now, the, the connector for the solenoid is this one here. I'm gonna go around the other side. What we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect it and then we're gonna wrap that in tape and then that is this solenoid then disabled. Okay, so simply a case of pulling the connector apart like so 
and that is the part that goes to the solenoid here, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this connector in tape. <laughs> Neighbor playing with the kids. Put plenty on, stop the weather getting into it. And again, absolutely nothing stopping this being returned to stock. All you have to do, remove the tape and uh, reconnect it and you're away. Now, one thing it's uh, worth noting with this is um, it won't throw an error with the fuel injection. Um, I know that may be a concern for some people, but there you won't get a fuel injection like doing this. Um, so there's no concern with no concern with that at all. I find it a little bit odd to be honest that the bike is as old as it is and it, this has never been done. Um, it's, uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a strange one. Um, we'll cover the cover the other end of the connector. Make sure there's plenty on there. Don't you don't don't scrimp on your tape. It's it's dirt cheap anyway, and you don't want you don't want um, you don't want any rain or other rubbish getting into it. And there we go. That is perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap a little bit of tape around both of these just to keep them tucked out of the way. And there we go. That's that. Now, all that remains is to uh, put the tank back down, um, start her up and make sure, uh, make sure she runs fine. Make sure you put the belt and cable back on. Make sure it's tucked back in. Make sure you're not trapping any wiring or anything. There we go. What we'll do, fire her up. There you go. As you can see, running like a champ. No fuel injection errors, as you can see. No problems there whatsoever. the engine put the bolts back in the uh, back in the tank
make sure the uh, holes are fully aligned. Last thing you want to do is cross thread one of the bolts into the frame. Make sure you're starting with your fingers first. Always good practice to start with your fingers first. Never, never get a tool on there and start grollying stuff down because you'll cross thread. Make sure you, uh, like this one for example, it's not in line. Just give it a little nudge. Give it a little nudge up. Come on, in you go. No, this one doesn't want to play ball. That's it. A little grommet, a little rubber grommet was just misaligned. Make sure you get them lined up. And there we go, bolt straight in. Tighten them up. Make sure they're tight. Check the manual for the uh, torque specifications. Get your torque wrench out. Torque them up. Jobs are good in. Next, all you have to do, seat back on. And there we are. Job done. Thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned for the next one. Thanks, guys.